First of all, I do not have a problem with Montreal's club scene mm. per se. <laughs> um, I have to drink for this because. Yeah, I'll drink too. Wow, <laughs> cheers. cheers. <laughs> Prochaine station. Loki MTL. MTL. you random stuff yeah who did you sleep <laughs> with last night you know what i mean <laughs> yeah no, like whoa that. That's good clickbait <laughs> all right so welcome to loki mtl thank you for coming Appreciate thank you for it. having me um so obviously you're here because you're in the space you're in the montreal space specifically and you're a dj but it's not dj mango it's mango the dj exactly <laughs> but why is it like that is there's a reason I don't know. It just like sounds cooler, I guess. Okay. I thought it was like a handle thing. Like you're trying to get like the handle. No, I just didn't know how to call myself. Mm -hmm. First of all, my name, my DJ name comes mm. from my family name, mm -hmm. which is Koman, but like you reverse it. So Manco, Mango. Oh. So I was like, oh, let's take that. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, how am I going to call my like Instagram username? Mm -hmm. And I saw a lot of people doing like, you know, like John Summit DJ, and I found it like a bit boring. Mm -hmm. So I was like, let's put a twist to it. So Mango the DJ. Okay, cool. I used to have a channel on YouTube called European Vibes. Yeah. So that's where it all kind of started for me because I wanted to do party content like Jay Alvarez, mm -hmm. traveling party Europe vibes content mm -hmm. type of thing. And um, then I was like, oh, let me get into music because COVID happened. Mm. So I had a lot of free time and I wanted to get into music because I used to play the piano. I used to sing when I was younger, too. And I also used to love house music, like since I, as long as I could remember, mm -hmm. um, because I was traveling to Europe and they only listened to that there, like... Mm -hmm. It's like true house music everywhere yeah for sure it's true because i but that's the like you're always like a creator right you're always in that yeah. space so like when you're doing your youtube channel like before did you just self teach yourself how to edit yeah. and stuff okay. yeah so since when i was eight years old mm -hmm. i started watching youtube videos um back in the day it was like jay alvarez and mm -hmm. mac barbie for like makeup Okay, yeah, I don't know. She was like an influencer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I used to love her. And mm. even like J when I saw like Jay Alvarez, his content with like his girlfriend, he seemed so cool traveling around mm -hmm. the world and stuff. I wanted to do something like that, but like also with music because I love like, um, I used to remember I was like really young, mm -hmm. used to travel to Europe every summer and sneaking out with my like friends or like my cousins to uh, go uh, watch DJ sets when Where my parents Europe? were... Sleeping Romania mainly, but okay. So you have cousins there. Are you, are you guys all around the same age? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. So I have a cousin my age yeah. and one my sister's age. Mm -hmm. So with the cousin my age, he had like friends, obviously in Romania because mm -hmm. he lives there. Mm -hmm. Um. So we used to like just sneak out, try to get backstage. Oh, uh, you were trying to get backstage. Yeah, back then, so. when I was like really young, like it started when I was like fourteen. Yeah. I think my first festival was Untold Festival in Romania when I was fourteen. Oh wow. Yeah. And then when did the, like the idea started coming to you of like, oh, maybe I could start DJing? You know. Um, like my dad was a DJ before, so oh. I always had that idea, mm -hmm. and I was always down to be like in front of cameras, mm -hmm. like be the star of a show. You're a performer, yeah. Yeah, like I was always like performing. I loved to sing, uh, to pay play piano when I was younger mm. I love to be like in front of a stage I also did acting classes so I was like always in that kind of like field uh, but I really leaned towards more music just because like house music was a really big part of me growing up and um, I don't know I just like relate to it I don't know <laughs> like, it's probably like a meditative experience for you yeah you know? maybe I don't know and it's like it's like mass hypnosis almost because you're like DJing you're like hypnotizing a crowd mm -hmm. And you start like understanding what they're feeling and like you start like you you kind of design your songs according to like how they are reacting exactly. to it. Yeah. That's okay. how yeah, basically how I choose my songs. But it's part of the job, you know. Like you're a DJ, you have to like read the crowd yeah. or else you're a flop. It's a funny you say you, you <laughs> you've always wanted to be a performer, because it's true, like compared to most DJs, I find you're more animated 
like yeah, when you're DJing. The energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you uh, like you do it on purpose, right? Because you have like you feel like like what's your how did that whole thing come up to you? Like where you're like oh like I want to be more animated and like um, more interactive. I think like mainly because I started on YouTube, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, not on YouTube. Sorry. So how I started the whole like DJ thing actually was on TikTok. Mm-hmm. My first like public appearance per se was on TikTok during COVID and when TikTok was starting out basically yeah. to be like more and more popular. <laughs> oh my goodness. Because you made a yeah, an entrance. TikTok and then um like on TikTok on during COVID it was hard to like connect with people. And how did I, you find TikTok so early though? Like what made you think, okay, like TikTok is gonna um be- because of YouTube, honestly. I knew how to like promote myself through YouTube, mm-hmm. right? I knew how to content create and I had like a background even on Instagram. I mm-hmm. used to work with brands like doing pictures and stuff. Like so I was marketing. just like, let's take this inspiration, all the videos that I have from my traveling and mm-hmm. just put them, you know, with like some house music or but this was before TikTok was like everybody was on it, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, not really before, like at the beginning, beginning. When everybody started talking about yeah, it. Yeah, like when COVID hit and mm-hmm. it, like in that March of that yeah, yeah, yeah. year. That was, that was my birthday, I remember. It was like I was going to oh, do a no. birthday party and I'm like, oh, I'll postpone it two weeks. And then it was like three years later. Yeah, everything. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was like fucking crazy. But yeah, so. What at, a crazy time, like COVID. Like, and it happened is, so fast, right? Yeah. So weird. And like I found a lot of people they're like like life path changed during covid Mm -hmm. so that's when you started like taking djing seriously too right was it a viral video like what what, like pushed you all of my videos like were doing really good like right away okay like first video that i posted was just like me djing not even like the sound wasn't even good you know Mm -hmm. like the audio wasn't connected so it was like the speaker surrounding sound yeah, Yeah. yeah and it was like two songs like just me mixing two songs like Mm -hmm. oh my god look i can mix two songs Boom, 10,000 10, views. Then mm. I posted another video similar, House Music for Girls Part 2. And it was basically just me, me transitioning two, uh, two songs together. It wasn't like per se for girls, but just like, it just like I don't DJ. know. It yeah, was yeah. just like. But you're, it's true, you're tapping into that market of like. Yeah, female. like female. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's really hard. Mm-hmm. But um, no, it, it went really well. Like even the second video, 30,000 views, and wow. all like up. Over a ten thousand. I wasn't mm-hmm. expecting less. Was your YouTube connected at that time to your? TikTok? Yeah. Okay, so, so I was doing live streams on YouTube. So I think like we're gonna come back to what we were talking yeah, before, yeah. like about the energy. So mm-hmm. I think that's where it, like all started for me, because the more I got views and responses, like people were commenting, asking me, "Oh my God, can you do this and this song together?" So it was like kind of like a snowball effect. Yeah. And then like. I just had like this bottled up energy and I didn't know what to do with it because like in a, you know, 15 second video back then and on TikTok, you didn't have like more than 30 seconds, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was limited. It yeah. was really limited. Yeah. And like you can't really like show off your energy, you know, and mm-hmm. also you have to show it off like intense and extra because you have 30 seconds to like yeah, please the person, true. you know. Mm-hmm. So I was like always like into it, you know, and it just like stick stuck with me. Then I started doing live streams on TikTok, which helped me gain followers. Sure, and yeah. Traction. So you were live streaming on YouTube before live streaming on TikTok? Um, on YouTube, I never did a live stream, mm-hmm. but I used to film like, let's say like an hour of me mixing and recording the audio as well. And mm-hmm. then like editing like that hour and a half and posting it on youtube oh like a live set yeah yeah like a live set okay basically. cool but no live streams but yeah. you've also done a lot of uh, like collab live streams on like twitch and stuff too right yeah do you find that's like important yes that really helped me i did a collab like i don't know if anyone saw that but now like their page is pretty big um their page name is everything edm or something like that like a big like edm page yeah 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 Yeah, i think a million followers like oh, wow. today okay. but they Back in the day, like during COVID, they mm-hmm. asked like random artists on TikTok that were like, um, how do you say? Um, popular? Yeah, popular, like yeah, getting more growing. Uh, yeah. growing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, they were asking to do like live streams every week and mm-hmm. I was part of them. And that kind of like helped me a bit because their followers saw my page. 
Yeah, you're cross pollinating. Yeah, flowers, kind yeah. of like that. But That's then cool. what happened is COVID stopped, mm -hmm. and I started playing at clubs, and I just didn't find the time like to, to be, be cons online. as consistent as before, you know. Mm -hmm. So like the views went like it didn't go down, but you know, like I stopped kind of growing mm -hmm. since then. But now I am back in business. You're <laughs> doing more online content now. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, I'm always curious uh, when like creators kind of like when they have that switch between like just doing it on the side to like making it like serious. Usually it consists of like buying like gear, right? Like mm -hmm. for me, like it's me investing in a camera, for example. Yeah. And I know DJ gear is expensive, right? Usually. Yeah, it's really expensive. So when did you like invest in your first like, when did you like, really, okay, like I'm okay. going to invest in this? I don't show. know if this is going to look bad for you, Why? but okay. my mom paid for my DJ equipment. That doesn't sound bad. Because She's she she wanted like she saw like that uh, you know like I was studying um, I was studying to become a doctor before okay. and I was really depressed mm -hmm. like it wasn't it's, <laughs> it's not for everyone you know no, you have no. to love it yeah. but I was always really good in school like yeah. I'm really good in school like I could have done it if I had the passion you have for the it. discipline to like do yeah. It. yeah but no I I just couldn't do it and she saw it like mm -hmm. throughout the years and then she. Like, I had a talk with her, like, you know, I'm going to drop out of this because I cannot do it. Mm -hmm. So since then, I've been so much more, like, happier. And Yo, it's very similar know. to me. Like, I had, yeah. a, I had to have that serious conversation with my parents. So like, yo, like, I got to drop them out. Them too? Okay. Yeah, because yeah. I'm, like, I'm, like, spending so much money on school. And, like, I don't know if I'm going to, like, do this for the rest of Exactly. My life. And I was studying, like, urban planning. It was sort of, like, random. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, and then that's when I, 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 like, invested in a camera. And I was, like, um... Like, I'm just going to take this seriously and, like, see what happens. But, look, like, for example, like, you, your mom helped you, but she supported you. But it's not like you're those, like, some people, their parents buy them things and they, they don't do anything about it. They just yeah. kind of, like, have a little fun and then, like, okay, I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah, no. You, like, continued. And, yeah. Like, you actually no, I'm built, pushing. Uh, yeah, yeah, you built the whole thing out of it. It's so a lot of money, bad. too, you know. Yeah. But uh, I'm really, like, I'm so grateful for my mom. She's so supportive, mm -hmm. always. She always, like, posts screenshots of like the stories that i post yeah, i'm yeah, like yeah. She's really hyping you up. yeah <laughs> That's so funny. but no she's really nice and yeah she helped me with my uh my dj gear mm -hmm. which is like um she got me two cdjs which is really expensive mm -hmm. but we got them like i did some research i helped her we got them like second hand second hand oh, yeah. okay, okay. obviously but yeah. they were like from a store from like vancouver and okay. they weren't really used nobody like rented them mm -hmm. so they were like brand new you know but so it, you they were just for rent you yeah. found it on like what facebook market uh long and McQuaid. they have what? like a uh, used gear and stuff it's really interesting mm. for music mm. Yeah, I found a bunch of things there, even like my speakers to produce. So. Oh, that's a good plug. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. My mom just invested in my mixing gear. Yeah. But the rest I paid, obviously. For sure, yeah. So so after all that, you're, how did you start getting into like like DJing at clubs? From so it's because of online. TikTok. <laughs> it was literally because of TikTok. I got approached by music. Okay. You know, the, the club? club? Yeah. <laughs> that was my first, like I never DJed. That's like the ever. most mainstream club here. I don't yeah, know but, now if it's still like mainstream like that. Yeah, but. it's really mainstream. But uh, I didn't know back then. So I always came into the scene as an artist, like with an artist mentality, not like, oh, I want to DJ in clubs. That wasn't my goal. My mm -hmm. goal was to like become touring DJ. Yeah, make music. Oh, okay, and cool. it was more like high, like, and, you know, because mm -hmm. you always have to like plan in advance. You have to know because or else. If you like, let's say you take like a lot of like bar gigs and stuff like that, yeah. you get in the local loop kind of. So it's harder to like, let's say, get festival gigs. It's I'll harder to, that. you know what I mean? Because you're seen as a local DJ. So it's oh. harder for your image. It's all about image too. For sure. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's a, a really like special industry. So, but at this time, you didn't think of it that way, right? You're just like, oh, no. music, I'm going to DJ. No, no, exactly. So, like, you know, I was doing good on TikTok, and then they found me on uh, TikTok, the mm -hmm. manager mm -hmm. there, uh, super nice guy too. Like, he was my age, and he was managing on music. I was like, really oh, impressed. Oh, wow. that's cool. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he, I got my first like residency short short-lived short-term mm -hmm. let's let's be honest because i soon realized that um they wanted more mainstream music so you know like rap latino music more like top 
50 Were there like certain, certain um, like themed days or was it just... Well, the first day that I played there was for like uh, the final, the World Cup. Oh, okay. So we were just playing during like the like showing of the World Cup. Oh, I don't know. Okay. There was like a music? soccer game. Yeah. What the hell? Okay. Yeah. You remember like when everything was opening up and like all these restaurants were doing that and they had like plastic oh yeah, yeah, yeah because right, of covid yeah, yeah when right when everything started, started to, like, yeah with the uh, qr codes and yeah stuff. like yeah. everyone was like in little like plastic cubes it was so funny and it was all like <laughs> so it was all image too that that was yeah. like all perception they were playing uh soccer too and i was just djing like i dj like basically three songs yeah, the whole yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. but then i played like a couple of other nights like a saturday and fr- like a couple of fridays mm-hmm. every uh every friday for that summer almost mm-hmm. But I don't know. In the end, like, I really liked the vibe, you know, mm. but I just didn't like the fact that I had to play music that I do not resonate so with. So they're re- requesting, like, oh, like, yeah. I want this kind of stuff. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. Yeah. And mm. that is, like, the biggest problem that I find in Montreal right now. It's just the fact that people are really, like, funneling a lot. And maybe, like, my type of music is not really, like, I don't know if it's, like, People listen to it. Mm-hmm. It really depends on the gigs and the crowd, I guess. But I find like there's there is a crowd for like deep house and that kind of stuff too. And but tech it's like, house and tech house, yeah. yeah. But it's just like underground and like people yeah. still want that music. They but just like, don't know where to find it. Let me know what like party like does that. You know, no. like everyone's like into the Tulum vibes, which is great. You know, I yeah. love Afro. I love playing it too. Mm-hmm. But it's maybe like I'm not gonna play that as a peak time show. You know. Yeah. Like, exactly. But uh, no, it's definitely a vibe. It's like, not like Europe or like Berlin. You yeah, know? like Europe. Last year, I uh, I won the Yacht Week DJ competition and I got to fly out to Croatia and they paid for my whole stay and Sick. I got to DJ okay. there. And everything. was this like an online uh, competition? Yeah. Okay. So Next like stage? I won the first stage of the competition. Then I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm never gonna win the second stage. <laughs> then I win the second stage. Like the first st- stage was just like answering some questions. Okay. So they're like, oh, we like you, na na. You're part of the hundred finalists. So I'm like, oh wow. Nice. Hundred. You're like, oh, out of ten thousand people, you that's, know. That's pretty good. But it's pretty in decent. your head, you're like already like satisfied, right? Yeah. I'm like, oh, whatever. Like. Yeah. I'm. I made it this far. Wow. Like that's so good. Mm. I'm pretty good. And that was like last year. You know, like last year, I didn't really do like I never did New City Gas, Mm -hmm. Beach Club. Like I was only doing like smaller bars and venues, Mm -hmm. you know. So for me, it was like, wow, okay, I'm good. You know, it went to my head a bit. (laughs) So you're having like a little bit of imposter syndrome, like you know, like yeah, I'm like, what am I doing here? Sometimes, yeah. 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 But no, like I, I honestly, I feel really comfortable. Mm -hmm. Like you have to, like it's normal to like feel that. In the yeah. beginning, when you're like seeing things for the first time, of course. But now you're like, oh, it's like normal, it's a big you know? change, you know, like being like being the person that takes care of the whole vibe of a soiree. Like, yeah, you know, it's like you. Proud, like people are gonna have that experience and then be like, oh, they have good music. Like, let's go back there. Yeah, you know? so it's very important. So it's a lot of pressure for that, mm-hmm. but. I love being in the center of attention. I love like, I love the lights. I love the attention. I don't know. I'm, I'm maybe I'm narcissistic. <laughs> I'm a Leo, so maybe that's something so, that has to do with it. So you're narcissistic. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't believe in that, but like, I don't, <laughs> you, I don't know, you need time. to have a certain like, you know, like a character. Like, but it's also self belief. Like, you're also yeah. not gonna ever like go to where you're trying. to Exactly. Go. If you doubt yourself, bro, you're not gonna make it. Yeah. Especially as a woman. Oh my god. Did you find it like harder as a woman in like the DJ space? Like, it doesn't have to be like typical. Like, well, typically, like I should, I'd be supposed to say yes, but. I'm going to say something right now. Like, I find it a bit easier Mm -hmm. because, you know, you're a girl. So, like, I don't know. Like, you put some makeup on, nice, cute clothes. Like, I find it easier in that way because, like, aesthetically, let's say, and it's, like, a a job about image Mm -hmm. also a lot. Maybe not, like, that important, but, you know, it's still, like, pretty up there. Like, I ha- I've had a lot of opportunities just because I'm a girl and I'm mm-hmm. going to, like, be honest about it. Uh, but at the same time, you know, like, I take them and I accept them. And, and at the end of the day, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah like, you're not taking opportunities. I don't know, like, flop. Like, yeah, you're, like, it's still, yeah. like, <laughs> it's still, like, a benefit. Like, you're getting that hook. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so 
I, I find that really like a smart way of thinking about it too. But yeah. it's, it's also even like it's cool because you're like, oh, like I'm not gonna expect like um, like anything crazy. And then when you start DJing, you're like, oh, like she's actually sick, you know, like yeah. the whole thing happens. So I feel like there's value in that. Yeah, like yesterday, for example, I did this uh, festival with uh, my friend Mandy's. Mm-hmm. Had a back to back with her. I was not expecting that at all because, like, the festival itself was like a camping festival. Yeah, I'm I saw the location not an outdoors person at all like i hate mosquitoes bugs like nature Mm -hmm. you know like i'm like a fancy i don't know like beach club person margarita you know yeah so for me i was like okay i was expecting like you know like a rave like with tents and stuff whatever but what they did with that place it was like honestly like i can't believe it like it was out of a dream where was it it was in Tingwick, Tingwick, How something far is like it? that. Two hours and a half away. Oh wow! But you get to like this like really random road. There's no lights, nothing, mm-hmm. and then you have to turn right. Like the GPS says, you you've arrived, but like there's no lights, nothing. Yeah, and it's just like a little hole in the forest. That you drive through, or you yeah, walk? you okay. drive through. So and there was like a little sign like Atmos Fest. <laughs> so we're like, okay, maybe it's here, you know. Yeah, so yeah. then we drive for like five minutes, and then we arrive at like a farm place with like tractors and stuff mm-hmm. like fields and stuff in the middle of the forest yeah, it's like remote. open fields whatever there's like two people there like oh you're for atmos fest you have to go there so then we go down like this hill hill sorry mm-hmm. um and there's like this really like nice waterfall with like lights laser lights music like toots, toots, mm-hmm. like you can hear you're from the car louder louder, yeah. on this cliff and we're like at the bottom of the cliff. We parked the car. Mm. I don't know. Like it was, it was like, I I couldn't believe I was there. Like I was telling Dimitri, my boyfriend, I was like, wow. Like, I was not real? expecting they, it. They, like, so they have a like, good set design. And, like, yeah, 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 yeah. What they did with that place, like. It didn't even look better. outdoors. Like when I saw your stories, I was like, what is this? Is this like a new club? Like, <laughs> yeah, it looks so like, you know, like I saw a TikTok on uh about Ibiza, Ibiza, okay. I don't know Ibiza. how you pronounce it. <laughs> yeah. There's so many ways of saying it. <laughs> yeah. But there's like this cave club mm-hmm. uh, under, like in a cave, like you have to like go down like in a beach and then it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. in you a go, hole. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. Like it reminded me of that. It was, was like sick. a whole cave with like rocks everywhere yeah. on a cliff and like lights everywhere. And like you could see the water. It was like a waterfall. Like, even to get to the stage, you had to, like, go through, like, this waterfall. You had to walk in water. Really? Oh, yeah. right. That's cool. It was, like, actually really crazy. Like, oh, yeah. a real festival. Like. Yeah. Was it their first one? Uh, no, they did last year. But mm. I, I didn't go. Uh, but apparently, like, this year, like, it was better. The production, they mm. upped everything. But big shout out to them, honestly. I was mm. not expecting it. Wow. Like, they really killed the, like, European yeah, boiler yeah, yeah. room vibes. Exactly. I it's, don't know. It's like, well, people are fiending here, but they don't know where to find, you know? Yeah. Even the crowd was really nice. Like, mm-hmm. not like, you know, everyone was not drunk. Everyone was just, like, peaceful, happy. Oh, really? Okay. I don't know. It was like a really nice type of, like, crowd. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's um, happy. Yeah. That's always a good vibe. acting nice, too. But, yeah, mm-hmm. lots of fun. So. Were you closing the show? Uh, yeah, we got peak, peak time. We weren't closing, though, but we okay. got peak time. We got from 11.30 to 1.30. Okay, okay. So it was basically, like, the times where everyone was, like, really partying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. You're, like, that's the thing. Like, your schedule is crazy, too, right? Like, on the weekends, like... Yeah. When did you well, end up getting, getting home last night? I, driving two hours? 5 a.m. <laughs> that's so crazy. I live in the Motan. Mm-hmm. So it was two hours on the South Shore, and I live, live on the no- North Shore, mm. so... You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyways, crazy. Yeah, it's so crazy. So are you thinking of like, like you've started off wanting to be more of an artist, right? So do you, I know that you produce too a bit, no? Mm -hmm. Are you like focusing more on that? Yeah. So I've shifted. I've already started the transition since my John Summit show. Mm-hmm. Like that. Oh well, yeah, we got we got to talk about John Summit. Yes. I remember you were always like, oh, you were like, oh, we were both my like, my god. I remember talking about it like, oh, John Summit sick, John Summit sick, and then you opened for him. That's crazy. I have to drink for this because yeah, I'll drink too. Wow, <laughs> cheers. cheers. <to> <laughs> John Summit has always been my idol forever. Like he 
it's because of Deep End that kind of like that too kind of like pushed me towards the DJing direction. You remember mm -hmm. Deep End, his song, I've been trying not to go. Oh, yes, yes, after yes. Deep End. Yeah. So that got really famous and popular because of TikTok. And that's what kind of what started his um, career. Mm -hmm. And that's where I started like doing TikTok as well. And I saw that song too. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, wow. I found him through YouTube, his life set. And then he just started binging all of his life sets on YouTube. He's you, so good. And him man. too. Like he has that like persona of like he's very like interactive. He's a party guy. Yeah. yeah. He has that like frat boy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, it works for him. Yeah. So, so how did you, how did that whole thing happen? Like how did you get that? So uh, I have like a, a good friend of, well, it's like a family friend of my boyfriend, mm -hmm. but it's a good friend of mine too. Uh, we met uh, in Miami Music Week because mm -hmm. I was there uh, to uh like give out some demos, meet some people at label parties. And he was there too. He's from Montreal. Mm -hmm. And basically we've been talking about it and he knows that I'm a big fan of John Summit. And he's been working with John Summit a couple of times. Mm -hmm. um, especially like, you know, his new City Gas show. He came. Yeah. He Last summer he was at the um, Oshaga or something. Mm -hmm. Anyways, he's been working with him uh, ever since he's big mm -hmm. or even before that, I don't, I don't really know, but he knew that I was really obsessed. And um, in Miami, we talked about my musical project, which is Mango, and he was like, "Yeah, I really want to help you out. Like maybe I could uh, give you uh, some tips and tricks, or put you in contact with some people, whatever." What, what do you mean by project? Like, um, well, Mango is my musical project, so that's how you see it. That's as? how we call it, basically. Like, okay, it's okay. My project. So I'm like working on my project okay cool yeah, yeah. you know i don't yeah, know it's no, just like a term it's a cool way of thinking of seeing it yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah so like, yeah my dj thing whatever mm -hmm. career yeah mm -hmm. exactly so he's like yeah i'm gonna help you out with your project and uh we're gonna talk about it more when we go get back to montreal and then we talked about it quick quick mm -hmm. and then i didn't really hear about him anymore about it you know because i mentioned you know like john summit is coming to picnic he hasn't announced like mm -hmm was coming to open for him and i like put the word like sub yeah. subtly like whatever yeah and then i didn't hear from it but then one week before the show i get an email from the booker at picnic not even the guy that i, I was uh talking about mm -hmm. and he's like oh would you like to open for john summit uh this friday i'm like would i like to yeah <laughs> you're like is this real yes <laughs> So right did, was there any kind of, like relation? Yeah, okay, he okay. basically because he w works for Picnic now, so oh, okay. he put in the word and he was working for it. Yeah. Then I like thanked him afterwards, and I was like, "Wow, you're like the best person ever." Mm -hmm. And he told me he was working towards it for like months or like weeks or something like mm -hmm. that for a long time, you know. But you also put in that like word, you know. Yeah, like, it's it's good to do that. Yeah, like you have to make a lot of connections. Yeah, that's the thing. So you're talking about Miami Music Week. Um, you went there specifically just to network and like connect yeah, with people? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. yeah. Did you already have like meetings set up or did you just kind of just wait? Uh, no, there's like a lot of, it's like a ADE, Amsterdam dance event in okay. October in Amsterdam. So basically it's this huge like musical conference in uh, Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing for Miami, basically. Miami Music Week is a musical conference and then there's Ultra as well, you know, for like the tourists. Are there the tickets tourist. for it or is it just like a, a festival? No, no, no. Um, in Amsterdam, though, you could pay like, I think it's 500 euros mm -hmm. and you have access to like all these talks and shows mm -hmm. and you can meet labels. Like it's much more of a music conference. I wish they did that for Miami, too, you know, but like, no, Miami was more like um, buy a ticket for this label party. Oh, I know this person. Let me get on the guest list. Okay, and it's also, like F1. There's like different tickets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, you know, like Miami is really like big on uh, promoters yeah. there like it's a different like club scene mm -hmm. basically and uh, my boyfriend has family in Miami and during COVID we used to spend like the winters there because Miami basically everything was open and yeah. everything was closed yeah why would you be in Quebec like, yeah Quebec. literally <laughs> like whatever you know yeah. like I'm gonna live my life I'm only yeah. young once mm -hmm. <laughs> So we met a, a bunch of people and we got guest lists basically everywhere because we're girls. But guys have to pay. Okay. Unfortunately. <laughs> That's funny. But I had everything for free, you know, like 
label parties, everything. We went with a group of people too. It yeah. was fun. They knew people. I knew people. Mainly off of social media though. You know, so like, you're like connecting with social media? Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, uh, nice to meet you in real life. Yeah, what's your you know? Instagram? <laughs> But we were already like some of the people I was already following on Instagram. So yeah. that was really cool to meet them in real life. Yeah, yeah. And, and make like, further connections. For sure. Like I met some friends from like LA mm -hmm. that were uh, in Miami that I met through TikTok, you know. Where did you find the most value in like meeting people? Um, I think the like, well, I don't know. For what you're trying to do. Like, uh, I think it's mainly like the label parties and especially um, the myth of Nick's party. I think that was like the best party that we did. Mm -hmm. And the value that we got out of it is, first of all, we got a track signed. Well, no, that was the... Mm, you got a track signed? We got a track signed, but it didn't happen there. It happened because of that, because mm -hmm. we met someone that got... That knew the person so mm -hmm. basically but anyways it was mainly like to give out demos to mm -hmm. meet um like all of the labels were there you know like a and r's from big labels yeah, yeah, yeah. we could meet with managers as well other big djs mm -hmm. i met uh, ryan shepherd mm -hmm. <laughs> he was a really cool guy chapter and verse to uh, we met him martin eichen and after that after i met martin eichen at that party mm -hmm. Uh, I was opening for him. Him there at the party. And Martin Eichen is really big. Like, mm -hmm. he's a big name in the tech house scene. Um, I, I don't know a song that he made, but like... Anyways, he has really popular songs. Mm -hmm. For sure, you know him. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm just uh, bad with names. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, me uh, too, but <laughs> I have to remember. If I see him in space, I'll probably know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went up to him and I was like, oh, hi, uh, nice to meet you. My name is Mango and I'm opening for you in Montreal in two weeks. And then he was like, oh, wow, what a vibe, you know, like super nice. Mm -hmm. He had like a um, bottle of tequila and he's like, oh, would you like some shots? Mm -hmm. Would you like to take a shot with me? So I took a shot with Martin Eichen. That's sick, yeah. <laughs> And then when I saw him at New City Gas, because mm -hmm. see, like, that's, like, what's good about it, because I already saw him. Yeah, so you So he knew me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I saw him at New City Gas, and he remembered me, and he's mm -hmm. like, oh, you're the girl that I took a shot with in Miami. I'm like, exactly, yes, yeah, I remember. I opened for you, and then we just started talking, and now he follows me on Instagram. <laughs> 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 It's like when John started following you on Instagram, I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> you saw that? Yeah, I remember you were, like, posting about it. Oh, <laughs> Everybody saw that. <laughs> But I was just happy. I was like, "Oh shit, this is crazy!" Yeah. Like it was cool to see you progress, especially because like when I you also first met, met him. Like, yeah, I know, and you opened for him. Yeah, I opened for him, but you know, like I opened at four, so whatever. That wasn't like for me. It wasn't about like opening at four. I I wouldn't mind even if I was opening at like one. You know, for mm -hmm. no one. Mm -hmm. Just the fact that my name was up on the same flyers as John Summit that mm -hmm. like is really good for my EPK, uh, which is kind of like your. DJ artist, like a press kit? yeah, press yeah. kit, yeah. So yeah, that was really But, good for that. So, um, do you find like because you're talking about ARs and like labels, is there like a way to like n avoid that and like be independent in this? Industry? Yeah, but I find it really hard to be honest. Um, the thing is, like, you have to make music, okay, if you want to become like international if you want to get out of the like local loop so that's the first thing you mm -hmm. have to make music because they're not going to book tomorrowland artists based on their dj skills yeah you just really you know you can't just recycle music yeah. yeah usually tomorrowland especially they book based on your position on the dj mag top 100 djs or okay. something like if you're like top one you can get like prime time on the main stage mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah, yeah, yeah like it's based off of that and your press kit obviously mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, you really have to make music and then, yeah, it's all about the connections and I started making music right now. I actually released a song with my friend Seb Todd. Mm -hmm. Um, it went, it, it got released on, uh, Purple Tea Records, okay. which is a Montreal based label. Okay, cool. And we got like 25,000 listens. So it's pretty good for our, for, for my first track. It, nice. on his first. Yeah. Isn't he uh, assigned to a label? Um, no. Oh, I thought he so, was. That's that's what I mean. Like at first, when you're starting out, you really need to get signed, like to sign your tracks to labels. So you make a track, then yeah. you send emails to. Is it for the distribution of it? Is that why? Yeah, 
it's mainly because of the distribution because mm-hmm. they're going to put money into it they're going to put your names uh, your name out there they also have access to this promo um app which is called inflight okay and basically what that does is it puts your music or new music from all labels and it sends them to like the promo uh folders or promo teams mm. of big djs mm, okay. so like let's say john summit's team or his promo email or whatever he uses i don't know what mm-hmm. every like week on friday because friday is release day basically mm-hmm. in the music world um on friday they um go through like that in-flight promo thing and they see all these new tracks from defected from that label that label sorry <laughs> oh so they incorporate it into their site yeah and oh, they cool. can play your track let's yeah, say yeah. You it's know like radio I mean? plays back in the days yeah yeah so it gets you plays from big djs and then you get videos from that let's say he plays it at ushuaia and ibiza you mm-hmm. know you get that video you're like whoa yeah Oh, so true, that's yeah. why it's good at first like you could self-release you know but usually it works better to self-release when you're I think it's more for like the raw hip hop world, maybe. Mm-hmm. And also if you have like a lot of followers or like you're viral on like mm-hmm. social media. I saw yeah, because of- especially in your industry, like your t- uh, style of like um, like tech house and stuff. Mm-hmm. You remember the song more than the artist at first because like the song is being played over and over again. Maybe there's like a TikTok trend or something. Exactly. And then eventually, once like there's like multiple, and then you like, you, like associate the, the the face with the music, you know? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's why you need like like I'm trying to get viral at the same time, you mm-hmm. know. But I want to also release some songs because. It's all about like building your whole portfolio, you know. Like, okay, you get viral, but you have no songs. Like, yeah, what where, do you do? where is that audience gonna go? Once yeah, they see you, you exactly. Know? Where's yeah. are they gonna like listen to songs? Like, maybe they live in Brazil. They're mm-hmm. not gonna be able to come to Montreal to see you, you know, yeah. just to see you DJ. Like, they could see anyone DJ. But it's all about the song. The song is what sells, is what sticks with the public. So mm-hmm. you have to ride the wave, basically. Yeah, as soon as like that's there, you have, have to, you have to be like prepared. You have to have like an album or something. Yeah. So exactly. what are you like planning on releasing? Actually, wait, pause. I don't know what we were talking about before. Do you remember? I do not remember. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to talk about um, oh yeah, like the the club scene and like being a DJ and like the Montreal scene. What do you find like is like <laughs> problems you faced and like how do you think as a city like these club owners could like do better? Okay, well if that makes sense. First of all, I do not have a problem with Montreal's club scene <laughs> mm-hmm. per se. <laughs> um like you know, it's like every like it's like in every other country, you mm-hmm. know, like they're trying to make money and that's pretty much it. Um, that's yeah, the, the industry economy. I'm in, you know, it's part of it. Yeah. Um, but like for my type of profile mm-hmm. as an artist, again, it's like some sometimes it's stuff that like not piss me off, but like, you know, well, it's not necessary. <laughs> do, you, do you feel like you're disrespected or something or? Um, a lot of times like, OK, first of all, music industry is really like backstabbing industry Mm -hmm. so that's not new you know uh everyone's like you know like jealous of each other obviously um also the fact that there's not a lot of big venues here and there's a lot of djs it's like a trend here Mm -hmm. like everybody loves performing in montreal yeah exactly but you know there's so many like good artists too um Mm -hmm. and really like really good venues but there's really shitty venues as well (laughs) um is there but is there is there value in doing the shitty venues like does it help no not anymore no to be honest no i'm not doing in the beginning in the beginning yes because i was all about the content so you know as long as they have an audience even if it's like a smaller venue Mm -hmm. like if there's like 50 people in a small venue and it looks packed Mm -hmm. and they have like lasers and it's cool. Like it's amazing for the content. Mm -hmm. I'm really grateful and uh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Um, But the problem with the smaller venues is that they, um, there's big difficulties with the payment. So that's first things first. That's my biggest pet peeve actually. Like what, Almost all of the venues in Montreal, it's so hard to get 
yourself paid and also they pay so bad like, but are you getting are you like agreeing to get paid a certain amount before doing the the gig and like, i waiting for the am money? but now i'm not taking it anymore like okay i'm gonna talk numbers like before i used to agree a hundred dollars mm-hmm. for a night and like I, yeah. or even like a hundred dollars like i'd play an hour but you know like i live in the montagne first of yeah. all 40 minutes to get here it's and 40 minutes to get back you know, like it's already forty dollars in gas, and then I'm paid a hundred dollars, yeah, and I have two coupons for like drinks. Like, yeah, it's not worth it. what am I supposed to do? You yeah, know, eventually you have to like you've passed that like wall of like okay, now I'm gonna have to charge like my worth. You know? Yeah, exactly. So I passed that. Like, oh yeah, that's what we were talking about, John Summit, the mm, concert. Okay. So like since John Summit, like I just realized a bunch of things. You know, mm-hmm. like these big artists, they're not like paying like. They're not getting paid $100 an hour. Like, mm-hmm. they're getting paid so much, you know? But I'm not expecting that either, you know? But I'm just expecting, like, some respect of it, yeah, you know? Yeah, you see that that's, like, a reality. I'm right? still working. At yeah. the end of the day, I'm creating the vibe for your whole venue, you know? Mm-hmm. And, like, the fact that... Sometimes, like, I'm going to be really honest with you. I have a list of all the venues that I did, like, by date and time, you know? Mm-hmm. And the year even, like the year well, is there. Why, just, just for yourself? Or just for myself paid? so I can keep up with my finances because you work yeah. for yourself, you mm-hmm. know? You have to run after your money all the time. Do you uh, ever um, think about like making a contract prior to doing the gig? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking about. And you that's what that. I was talking to with like my bigger DJ friends mm-hmm. like that are a bit more professional in other countries. Mm-hmm. They get paid beforehand, and that's at least I, even like twenty five percent, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I think I'm gonna do, or like a contract, like saying, okay, if I don't show up, like I don't care, I'll refund you yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I don't know, mind. I'm not doing this for the money, but mm-hmm. like, bro, at least pay me, you know. You still like, have to like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm gonna tell you, and I'm gonna be really honest. Mm-hmm. Out of like, um. There's one club in particular here in Montreal. I am not going to name names because I don't want to start anything. Mm-hmm. But For like the two people watching this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's so funny. It doesn't matter. Oh my God, T. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's um, going to watch this. But uh, yeah, no, I'm not going to name names. But there's one club that never paid me to this day. And I worked there for free. But, you know, I'm still happy. Did they just ghost you or like was it just like... They never ghosted me. But when I went to Miami this summer, this summer... Well, actually, no. I'm going to tell you the whole story without mentioning names. Mm -hmm. So I played last summer. I played for Halloween, their big Halloween party. I played like a bunch of parties, you know. I went to Europe Mm -hmm. in um, August and then I came back in September. Mm -hmm. And then I came back, I did the Halloween party, whatever. But even before, I I played there. So before leaving for Europe in August, I sent an email with my check, you know, and being like, thank you for having me. Here's my check. Uh, Pleasure again, blah, blah, blah. No answer. I leave for Europe. That was no answer from them. That was like the last email that I sent them. Mm -hmm. no answer so then i leave for europe and then i play i think four other shows there four other times like it's pretty you know like 45 45 minutes 45 four times you Mm -hmm. know so it's pretty big for me i spend a lot of money on those shows yeah you're going out of your way to do these yeah literally and then like i keep on sending my checks but no answer all the time you know to the same email and i've been working with them for like two years So then I leave for Miami and then like while I'm in Miami because Miami is really expensive, Mm -hmm. I start like thinking about my finances and I'm like, oh my God, I remember I have money like that I'm owed, you know, from them. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to refresh, you know, the email and see if they're going to answer me. (laughs) So I text them um, a week before I email them, sorry, a week before Christmas. No answer. Then at Christmas, I get pissed. For sure. So I email them on Instagram. Uh, no, I message them on Instagram. And then I'm like, oh, I sent you guys emails, you know, like I have no answer. Like, what's going on? Where's my money? Like, it's five shows that I didn't get paid. Okay, mm-hmm. I got paid. Like, they paid me $150 per show, but it's still like, you know, times matter. five. Yeah, yeah. It's still your money. It's still like my money. Yeah. You know, I worked for it. I'm not a doing this for free yeah, you know 100%. so anyways i text them then they're like oh, okay um we changed our email like it's so suspicious you to me you know what i mean 
changing their email, not announcing anyone, none of their workers to change mm-hmm. their email. Yeah. Like where you get paid, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, it's sketch, weird, yeah. it's so sketch. Yeah. So then I got pissed and I, I was a bit bitchy <laughs> about it, but yeah. like straight up, you know, I was like, okay, like how, how come you didn't say, you changed your email, you didn't say to anyone. And also they said, we changed our email. And because of that, because you're too late, mm-hmm. oh, we can't pay you. It's too late. What the fuck? No. Wait. Yeah. That makes no sense. That was it's clearly like that's so unprofessional. Yeah, really unprofessional. Mm-hmm. So I was like, that's like horrible, first of all. And I was like, Is this I'm like gonna- a big like event planning company or a, a, like a venue? Well, they closed down all of their their accounts after mm-hmm. this whole thing. Okay. Also after this whole thing, like they paid me only one of the shows. So I got $150 out of everything. But whatever, like moving on, you know. You don't want to deal with it anymore. So you're like, fuck I'm it. just not dealing with yeah. them. Or any like smaller venue or any like bar yeah it's such a headache you know and like for you know like people like how can i explain this like people like let's say on tiktok they want to see extra stuff you know Mm -hmm. like they don't want to see like you djing in your bedroom anymore it's not covid like the times have changed yeah it's really fast paced so Mm -hmm. now they want to see bigger and bigger and better stuff Mm -hmm. so like it's not useful for me to do a hundred fifty dollar gig that i'm probably never gonna see the money ever again you know what i mean and the content's not even crazy yeah like the content's not even that crazy so that's why i've been declining so many gigs like so many gigs Mm -hmm. just because like i don't see the point in like showing my face to these things like it's all about the image you know like if you show only your your face like at Opening for John Summit, then opening for Martin Eichen, then opening for, you know what I mean? Yeah, and now people are gonna be like, uh, okay. Yeah, and people are gonna feel more weird about Exclusive. like asking you to like like that's good because like people are gonna feel more weird about asking you to um like DJ for free somewhere and be like, Oh, like come DJ yeah. at this party, like you know what I mean? Like you got you gotta like evolve out of that eventually. Exactly. So I'm not taking that and I'm trying not to promote if I take stuff like that. Sometimes it's for fun, you know, it's always fun to DJ for fun. But again, coming back to the Montreal music scene, yeah. I just don't find it fun anymore in the clubs, the DJ here. Like most of the clubs, they have like that Afro vibe, which again, I love the vibe and whatever, but it's not my style, you mm-hmm. know? Like I'm a tech house. Like I'm really Because you also to- know how diverse like people in Montreal are. Like every- people here like so many different styles of music. Yeah, so exactly. it sucks when like venues are only like pushing this one style. But you know? like the big, like that's what I'm saying. The big venues here that are have like hype around it. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like high school, you know. Because like, it's mostly a, um, like a, um, a student population. Much yeah, though. that's the, I think that's the problem. Exactly. So they're catering to like the students that are like just like university. Yeah, they just came to university. They just college. came to Montreal. They just want to go out and like they're trying to cater to their music, which is like mm-hmm. radio music, basically. Well, not mainly radio music, because radio music, like, yeah, whatever, like, you know, like clubs like Le Rouge or music or stuff like that, like, that's definitely not my feel. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking more about, like, electronic dance music. So there's, like, multiple genres, right? But here, I feel like the big clubs, like I, I mentioned earlier, I feel like it's, like, a big high school, like, a big high school. Unless it's, like, stereo or something, right? Or do you find stereos like that, too? Stereo, no. Stereo is very underground. Yeah. Stereo is very, like, for the quality of sound. Exactly. Like, that place is really amazing. Yeah. I feel like... Uh, but it's very dark. Yeah, I know. It's not for everyone. That's the problem. Like, <laughs> I, I wish I could hear stereo music, like, earlier, you know? Like, I don't have to, like, stay up all night. Yeah, to listen to stereo that's music. true. But, but I, I just wish, like, they, they, like, make... I don't know. They should hire someone to make stereo, like, like a space Miami have you ever been to yeah, space? Yeah, no, but I've seen video. Like, I know what space is. Bro, space is like... I know. I, I want to go. Like, I want to go one day. But it's so, like, it's bougie. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and the people that go there... Like, I feel like stereo, sometimes it's a bit dark. So the people that go there are not, like... 
they're not the most like lightly per- no, people, no, no, no. you know, like they're dark. You like, feel like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, you feel like you're going to hate yourself the next Yeah, morning. but space, it's all about like plants and they have like, their ceiling is um, glass. Glass, yeah, yeah. And it goes on until the morning and then when the sunrise comes, yeah. it's like all light everywhere. Yeah, you're not coming, going outside yeah. for a cigarette and being like, why is it daytime right now? Yeah, like stereo cracks. is more like a box. Like it's in yeah, Berlin, yeah, yeah. you know, it's yeah. dark. But I love the vibes, you mm-hmm. know, like, yeah. I love to play there. I'm I'm big on techno right now. Like, mm-hmm. um, even like the music that I'm starting to produce, it's going towards more like melodic shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, I don't know if I can swear. No, you can swear. Yeah. <laughs> no, I literally don't care. But uh, anyways, yeah. So more melodic, but mm-hmm. melodic tech house. You mm-hmm. know, kind of like John Summit. Yeah, 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 when he yeah, does yeah. like Escape. Yeah, more for like, sure. Yeah, no, that's the kind of stuff I like too. And what he plays too, he plays techno. Mm-hmm. Played techno at Picnic. Yeah, I, I saw what him at Picnic. Awesome DJ. I was there at Picnic. I saw him. It was sick. That was my first time seeing him. Huh? Yeah. I met him. Yeah, I know. It's cool. Oh my God. How was your interaction? Was he, was he who you thought he was going to be? No, I don't know. Um, yeah. He was like nicer than I thought. Okay. He was. You thought he was going to be. Like, I don't know. I thought he was going to be like, you know, he's a big thing in the tech house yeah, yeah, yeah. scene. He's so huge mm-hmm. right now. Like, he's the biggest tech house. I think the most up and coming one too. Yeah. He grew up fast. Yeah, like I, from COVID, his his whole like trajectory yeah. just like skyrocketed. Yeah, but no, he was really nice. He gave me a hug. Mm-hmm. I was like, wow, I'm like John <laughs> Summit. <laughs> just fangirling. Yeah, I'm a big fan girl, honestly. So like funny. I'm so obsessed just because like he's, I like I really love what he does and I. Like his like message and like his vibe, his music, everything resonates so well with me. Mm-hmm. And I just wish like we had more people like him mm-hmm. and me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, but like him no, in Montreal, you know? Yeah, for sure. But what, the, what ends up happening in Montreal is like people end up leaving Montreal, right? Yeah, so they don't end up staying why. here, you know? So we were talking about like clubs and stuff like that. So like what's your, what kind of advice would you give to like some, like a DJ that's just, like up and coming? In the so space. depends what you want to do. You really have to like really think what you want to put out or wh- what image you want to like. Yeah, yeah long term image basically. Mm-hmm. So do you want to be a local DJ? Do you want to do weddings and stuff? Do you want to play rap? Do you want to do DJ- Afrobeats? Yeah. You, yeah, like what style? Then obviously your style of music. Mm-hmm. But if you want to be become international, first things first, learn how to make music so you should start producing and then dj instead of dj then producing. yeah like if i had to go back i'd start by producing first and then start DJing. because producing is so hard mm-hmm. especially with like the numbers of artists nowadays and so much quality like you have to be really up there you mm-hmm. know you cannot put out like shitty stuff yeah and it like to get that quality it takes like years and years of like doing it over yeah. and over and over and over again like right? I have my uh, my friend, like, Seb, yeah. let's say, bro, he's been doing this for seven years. But yeah. the guy is now starting to, like, really pop off. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Seb. Mm-hmm. No, no, I love his music, too. So. But he's really, really good. He's been really helping me, too. Like, even mm-hmm. with my, um, like, l- just learning, you know. And even, like, I'm a visual learner. So by making music with him and producing together, he's been really helping me a lot. Mm-hmm. Same thing with photography. Like the most I learned was when I would go out and video, do video, or take pictures with other photographers. Mm-hmm. And you teach each other things, and like the yeah, you have to surround like, yourself like that yeah. too. Another like conseil, uh, yeah, 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 thing advice, for yeah, yeah, yeah. advice. <laughs> Sorry. Another advice would be like surround your. Like, yeah, guru yeah, yeah. TED talks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, it, but it's people. good to like re- reiterate on that because it is true. No, you yeah. Yourself. Like that helped me. I used to be friends with like a lot of party people, but mm-hmm. I felt like they were more into like partying Cons- more than like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like Aliens. they were more into like partying. My old friend group mm-hmm. before getting into DJing were really into partying. They wanted to go out a lot. But, you know, they d- didn't, like, specifically like house music. They weren't, like, passionate about it, you know? Mm-hmm. And then I met uh, my friend Yanni, and that's how I met my boyfriend now, mm-hmm. and Seb as well through Yanni. Mm-hmm. But Shout I'm, out to Yanni, yeah. Yeah, I met, like, this I met you through Yanni, I think. Yeah. Well, no, I met you and Yanni at the same time, it's true. And Ribs. 
And ribs, yeah, yeah, true. Shout ribs, out to ribs okay. too. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to ribs. But you know, like when I met Ribs and all these guys and mm-hmm. Seb and Yanni and my boyfriend, that time it was like two summers ago. Um, that's when I started to feel more like, okay, like I can do this mm-hmm. because you know, like with your normal friends, like I have my normal friends and I have my like DJ friends. Mm-hmm. Like when my normal friends were gonna talk about like drama oh my god what happened yeah, in that yeah, relationship yeah. you know tea. like tea yeah. <laughs> but like with yanni and my dj friends and seb and all these people like we're gonna actually talk about music oh my god did you l- listen to like john summit's podcast like we're gonna give each other tips and tricks mm. oh i heard like this new like tutorial on youtube how to make this sound like yeah i'm gonna show you guys like this is how you make yeah, it yeah it's a productive chilling yeah so we like always like talk about stuff and we push each other so mm-hmm. it's a really like good group so that's like one of another biggest advice like even if you're not like a really friendly person it doesn't really matter you know like you have to be. producers are all like nerds mm-hmm. we're all nerds mm-hmm. you know i'm more outgoing i guess that's what what's really helpful so that another yeah, yeah. advice being social for sure you yeah. have to push yourself you know yeah. just put yourself out there who cares yeah like they're gonna like you they're not gonna like you okay whatever mm-hmm. if they don't, don't like you and they talk about you that's even better yes yeah, it's, yeah. It's, you it's marketing yeah people yeah okay dope so basically that you have any um are you into conspiracies at all i'm just curious more like conspiracy theories like aliens <laughs> okay yeah so what do you think of how they released that like uh i don't know like, if it's true or not you know why it's because nobody cares like everybody's so like i yeah. feel like everybody's so traumatized by the last three years of like covid and everything whenever we hear anything crazy on the news we're just so sort of like okay oh, casually we're yeah, gonna like, have a hearing about aliens they yeah. exist we're just like oh, okay we just like laugh about it <laughs> but i don't know like even like tiktok's TikTok tends to exaggerate things too. So I just feel like, I don't know if this is like a joke or if they're trying to like. But apparently it was under oath and it was on all the main news channels like CBC. Like yeah, but it CNN. could be under oath. But at the same time, you know, like there could be someone like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it, it could be all it staged. Be yeah, it could all, <laughs> you never know. It's true. It could all be staged too. But I really think like. If you have that amount of power, whatever, mm-hmm. so uh, if you're in the government, you have that amount of money, like Trump, for example, bro, the guy is loaded. He has like real estate. He has yeah. music. He has, bro, he has even a song on Beatport yeah, that yeah. was chart top one, like yeah. crazy. But you know, like when you have that amount of money, there's like a lot of stuff that goes that you, you're for hiding? sure they do stuff that we don't like weird stuff you know what i mean sure. you get bored you know yeah you did true. everything you traveled everywhere what are you gonna do now yeah I would just for be sure president. there's <laughs> some of these conspiracy theories for sure there's like some truth oh to that's it. interesting yeah yeah there's a lot of things that are hidden because yeah. rich people are bored like for mm-hmm. sure i'd yeah, be bored true. you know yeah after 20 years of being loaded like, like you doing can do whatever everything. you want anytime you want yeah, yeah. Like the Titan, Titanic. Yeah, the, the, Bro, the, they were bored. Le. Yeah, and it's so stupid the whole like submarine thing because you could only see through like a small little window. I would never do that. I'm really scared for those things. But like, if I'm rich, like I'm gonna do weird things. Like I don't know, uh, buy an island, create a festival there, yeah. like stuff like that. You know, yeah. fun stuff. Not go on expedition in a fucking yeah, and go see a two centimeter square. Yeah, and go see like shitty version of the Titanic. That's so idiotic, honestly. Yeah. What a stupid thing to do. <laughs> yeah, I and know. he brought his kid to that guy. That's the sad part. My good. Yeah, poor guy. That was the sad part about the whole thing, but. People are also saying yeah. they're talking about that on the news a lot because they're trying to cover up um, something else. Maybe they didn't even die. Maybe they're chilling somewhere. They yeah. changed identities. Apparently, like the, uh, you know, like the Epstein thing. Yeah. That was like coming back up on the news. Yeah, so they, I saw about that. So they randomly started talking about the the um, the submarines all all of a sudden, and like that was all you saw in the news. It's almost like they like manipulated the news. But anyways, now we're going too deep into conspiracies. Yeah, we could go for hours because I'm like really interested about it. But I wish I like if I had a superpower, Mm -hmm. it would be to like know things. I don't know. I want to know like I'm a T person, you know, like you want to be able to read minds. Maybe not read minds, but like know like 
I don't know, know if there's aliens. Like, no, like, oh, like answers. Have the like, video answer, like, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, please, guys, like, yeah. stop, like, misinformating us. Like, mm-hmm. just let us know. Yeah, it's just not that the deep, truth. you know? Yeah. That's the whole human existence. Like, like if there's out. aliens, aren't we supposed to, like, know about it, you know? Like, no, we're going to live with them. Eventually. At some point. But it's like a, I feel like it's a slow process because some people are just going to be so crazy that they're just going to be like, oh, aliens are here and they're just like yeah, shooting everybody. You that's know? for sure. Because it's a big change. Yeah. And there's but I, I'd be like down. I don't know. Yeah. No. I would love to interview an alien. Not yeah. <laughs> the next uh, podcast. Yeah. I don't even need a mic because we're just like telepathy like the whole time. Yeah. Like, how? But you know, that's the biggest like thing. That's the biggest red flag about this whole thing. Like, they were saying like, yeah, we talked with them or I don't know, they were doing, uh, the guy was saying like, me and my wife, we saw them and they were doing really disgusting things. Okay. He was saying something about that. Yeah. But even like talking to them and they were saying like they had like new technology. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the hearing right now, but mm-hmm. yeah, they yeah, were yeah. saying stuff like this. But then I'm asking myself like, how could they understand each other? You know what I mean? We don't yeah, have how the are same. They talking? Yeah. Okay, maybe they have a technology, you know. Like, well, it could also just be like telepathy. Yeah, maybe, maybe. You know, that's possible because, like, I don't know about you, but like, I've been down like psychedelic old trips where I was like talking to people without talking to them. Yes. You know what I mean? So, like, I talked to a McDonald's ordering thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. For like <laughs> two hours. What? Or like, like an hour and 40 minutes. Like you were actually in front of like uh, an order. Yeah, that was my only experience with acid and okay. never again. So were you driving? No, 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 no. Okay. No, no. You're in the back seat. Um, we went to, you remember uh, Olympia in Montreal, the Olympic Stadium? Yeah, they were yeah, doing yeah. like a little like Oasis Festival, it was Oasis. called. Oasis, yeah, yeah, yeah. We went to see Chami. Okay. It was yeah. raining that day, no? Yeah, it was yeah. Right, downpouring. Oh my God. I remember that day, yeah, yeah. And it was like before COVID, like mm-hmm. years before COVID, you know? Yeah. It was back in like the, I, I call it like the golden rave years. Yeah, when everything was like about to take off. Yeah, then, yeah, like everything was going so well. Mm-hmm. Even like the rave, like the rave scene, like the festivals, it was like all like deep house music it was like mm-hmm. all melodic you know like yeah. beats of your heart those like european sounds you know mm-hmm. it was such a vibe that, like the golden years honestly yeah. like literally and uh i took um i took a molly mm-hmm. that's it but then like i'm saying golden years of raving because like everyone used to share water bottles you yeah. know and then <laughs> covid hit and oh my god yeah, yeah, yeah. no sharing anymore you know but yeah you used to share water bottles in the crowd. Like, I yeah. wouldn't care, you know? Like, would, oh my God. Well, that's the main thing when you're with friends. But not even with friends, with strangers, even with strangers bro. Like, do you need water? Do you need water? <laughs> yeah, that's what I, we used to do back then. Like, yeah. when I, I started raving, my first festival rave, mm-hmm. like, people were asking me for water bottles. And I'm like, whoa, is this a thing, you know? Mm-hmm. That was in Europe. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know if it was like this here, but even here, like at Oasis, I remember sharing whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I shared a water bottle that had a- an acid tab in it. Okay. And it just took one gorgé, but yeah, that yeah, yeah. killed me. So you're on so, Molly and acid. Yes. Okay. I d- it's called candy flipping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I didn't know that term mm-hmm. before, but then I started seeing things, and hearing like, oh, this things. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's also what kind of, like, sped up my DJing process. That's kind of, like, what got me into it, mm. made me think about it. Because I had such a, like, it wasn't honestly a bad trip. It was, uh, like, when I was there, it was, like, I was, like, in glitter. I love glitter, okay? Mm-hmm. But it was raining, so it was, like, glittery. And I was, like, seeing stuff. And I, w- I just felt like I was in glitter. And Chami was playing Adieu, his song. You tell me to leave you alone. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. Like, I still, rem- still remember the feeling. Mm-hmm. Wow. Like, I felt like the glitter was, like, pouring through me. Yeah, it yeah. was such a vibe. So you, and started, then we- you started, like, associating, like, the feeling. And, like, you started seeing. Yeah, I just felt everything. Like, the music was the glitter, but... It was the rain. Mm. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, know I exactly. cannot explain. No, I know exactly what you mean. But yeah. like, wow, what yeah. a vibe. But then when we left, it's starting to go downhill. Yeah. But that's cool because <laughs> you're seeing <laughs> you're seeing like a perspective of your audience. If you were a DJ, like these experiences are what people are having. And like it's... But that's what I'm trying to do too. Like, I don't know. Like I, I took that experience and put it in my videos. Mm-hmm. So like all of my videos, I try to edit them in like a retro 
filter yeah, yeah, yeah. you know like put some glitter some like light mm-hmm. beams whatever i don't know it's what i felt there mm-hmm. when i was at chami and then when you left chami what happened when i left chami oh my god i don't remember but i remember we we took the metro but i remember going out of the metro yeah and we parked the car at the uh, Côte Vertu. Okay, so you're at that McDonald's? So that yeah, McDonald's, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is like packed all For the sure, time. Yeah. Oh my There's God. There's a lot of funny stuff that happened there. And like my friends were walking to the car and I don't know, they lost me for like an hour and 40 minutes. Mm-hmm. They were looking for me. I did not have my phone with me because mm-hmm. they took it from me because I was... You would have lost it, yeah. But they found me in the McDonald's. And apparently I was talking with the like ordering machine. Inside or oh, I think you're talking about the, of the McDonald's. Oh, I think you're at the drive-through. <laughs> no, 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 okay, no. okay, <laughs> no, no, and no, like no, the, no. Ta- the touch yeah. thing. And I was like tapping and I was dancing because <laughs> you know, like when you're on Molly, you like, yeah, 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 you want to still dance. You're always hearing a beat. I don't yeah. know what, I, like, I do not know, and I do not want anyone knowing me and have seen me there, mm-hmm. but besides my friends. They're the only people that remember that story and this mm. podcast that's yeah. going to be on the internet forever. <laughs> it's a funny story. Yeah. But yeah, it's a funny story. And I was talking with the like ordering thing and um, my friends came to pick me up. And they're like, Anna, oh my God. I'm talking to a machine. Are you okay? <laughs> I remember that. And then I remember I, I, I puked. <laughs> and yeah, I was good, good after night, that. Uh, every good night or memorable night ends with puking. So yeah. That's good. I puked outside of the McDonald's because oh, I was yeah. feeling bad. I'm like, I have to puke, but I cannot puke here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so you're still aware of that? Yeah. Like yeah, that? yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Then we went outside. And then I was good. Then I don't remember who. I don't remember how. But we went to my house mm-hmm. and I was having an after party. Oh, I nice. planned it in advance. Like, yeah. how stupid of me. <laughs> I was really, really high. But um, I was having a house party. I was in my room the whole time and i was just looking at the ceiling and like oh, seeing I think you're DJing. things you're DJing or no, 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 okay. no, no. Just vibing. i couldn't even like sure, i couldn't yeah. even like i was like wow yeah. like what's going on you know like my friends took turns to like stay with me you know See, everyone good. was partying in my house yeah. i was just in my room like vibing <laughs> since then i haven't done anything yeah anything. so you're like never again type of thing no yeah. never again you know like it's the industry yeah, it's the it's crowd the, yeah. but it's also the phase like it's it's not gonna like most people after like eventually they like kind of yeah. grow out of it um, i grew out of it there like it was my wake-up call yeah, yeah, yeah. bro that was too much for me everybody has that moment but then eventually after a while like maybe you're gonna be in ibiza one day and be like okay fuck it let me do yeah. it one more time i don't know i went to ibiza last year and i was the soberest person on the island really? I swear but you to God. still had a good time i had such a good time yeah. but I- i'm more into alcohol to be honest mm-hmm. Like, I'm not an alcoholic. You're just like, that's what I say. And then I drink all the time. <laughs> yeah, cheers to that. <laughs> I'm just like sedating my thoughts, you know. But I'm Eastern European. I'm from Romania. So yeah. we're big drinkers. I like, But I like alcohol because alcohol, you could like, just like, I'm not condoning any drinking. Mm-hmm. But alcohol, you can like control, you know. Mm-hmm. You can um, like when you take a pill or something, bro, you lose control for hours. Yeah, and you're prepared. Like, oh, you're okay, man. for the next hour or two, like... And then the next no day, you're like, oh, the yeah. blues, you know? You like shit, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I get but it. Like, alcohol, okay, you feel like shit if you, like, abuse it. Yeah, but obviously. if you just, like, sip and then you chug water before bed, yeah. you're solid, you're good, you know? Drink smart. Drink smart. And, uh, yeah, so if the world doesn't end with all these crazy things happening right now... What's your game plan? Like, what's your end goal? So right now I'm going to Europe. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of money. It's really expensive, Europe, because now it's a trend on TikTok. Mm -hmm. Euro summer. But anyways, I'm still going because I I just love it. Also for the contacts, mainly. I'm going to go. Where in Europe are you going? Um, Mykonos. Mm. I'm meeting with uh, a DJ friend there Mm -hmm. that I have on Instagram. Then Paros, Santorini, Athens. Athens, I have some other meetings there. Are you going to vlog any of this stuff? Or? Yeah, yeah, of okay. course. Yeah. I got a new phone. <laughs> Are you going to start YouTube vlogging? Yeah, I'm really down. Oh, cool, dope. I, I really like the way you edit your vlogs, even like yeah. back then. Yeah, I saw it and I'm like, yo, like, why aren't you I want to do that this? again, yeah, this summer. So yeah. that's what I'm going to do. This is more of like a content networking trip. Mm-hmm. And then after Greece, we're going to Ibiza, mm-hmm. Mallorca, and Barcelona. 
When so, what when is that? Like this this month? This like uh, August? from August, like beginning of August, all well, the month of August. Yeah, basically. yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's that, and after that, when I come back, um, I'm gonna I'm doing some classes, some production classes. Okay, cool. But it's like mastering classes, so it's really to like a six months intensive class mm -hmm. um, to really like yeah like make a song it. like professionals you know because i'm down i'm really sorry i'm really down to like invest in this mm -hmm. just because like i'm tired of like doing the youtube thing you know it's yeah, like yeah, so yeah. slow mm -hmm. like and it's an investment and you're gonna like feel more like literally polished. and by next year i'm telling you by next year i am down to like be not touring maybe but like maybe go to europe do some shows there like be i don't know have two or three songs at least out mm -hmm. maybe one big label if possible like something like that so in order to do that i need to like be better at making music mm -hmm. but i'm already like pretty good i already have like two songs that i made by myself mm -hmm. That's why, like, you know the basics. So if you yeah. do a course, you're going to be, like, set. So it's a one-on-one -on -one course mm -hmm. uh, by this uh, industry guy that's really, really good. It's mm -hmm. a bit expensive, but you're investing I'm in investing yeah. in this, like, it's for the long term, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's the future plan. Yeah, and do you, are you trying to release, like, an album or something or, like, a project like that? or No, not really. Later? Like, right now. Like, honestly, house music is so fun. Like, mm -hmm. it's not that serious, you know? You don't yeah. have to do an EP or whatever. Yeah, that's true. All about, like, sampling. If you find a nice sample, that could work well. Yeah. It's it's just fun, you know? It's fun. But uh, eventually, for sure, I'm down for an EP. Like, I have so many ideas. But it's so frustrating not knowing what, you know, like... So that's why mm -hmm. I'm investing that's in the class. That's also why I like doing these podcasts because like see how you're like saying all this and like you're kind of like manifesting it, right? We'll see. John Summit, I manifested it, by the way. Every night before going to sleep, I'm like, okay, I'm opening for John Summit. Let me picture myself. Nah, nah, nah. And then you, like, boom, I got it? the email. I'm like, wow. That's crazy. That's it's crazy. not cringe to manifest. I no, no, no. That, that's like a crazy detail that you left out. But I'm happy you mentioned it at the end. Yeah. It's good to know. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to see... Um, You've already came like so far since I met you, and I'm excited to see like. Yeah, where you're right. Yeah. We met like when I wasn't even doing. In the beginning, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, gang get. Gang yeah. get. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It was so much fun. <laughs>